Good evening and welcome to an update of the plot on the 8th of September, Friday. Bit of sunshine today for a change. 8th of September today and the sar plums are still on the tree and unlike many other people's plums, these are still um, ripe for picking. Many people's plums by now in September um, are overripe but these ones are fine. They can still be left on the tree because I've got some at home but as you can see I've actually trimmed away some of the leaves following advice with what people are doing with tomato plants to let a bit more sunshine onto the plums so a nice crop there super year for apples this year and again I've been trimming off um, the tips of these so I'm left some but basically it depends on whether these these apples here as you can probably see um, are spur bearers they come on the spurs of the branches and basically the idea is I don't want to have too much leaf on them on a dwarf rootstock because then they're not going to be able to ripen correctly even though they might look as if they've got colour on the outside I mean there's a lot here quite low down supported as you can see by a cane you've got to make sure there's not too much leaf on the tree um, because these are still not ripe and many apples don't ripen until late September and I've tried it and seen some people have been picking apples uh, around on the allotment and uh, they've discovered they're not ripe yet. Again the same with these red bramleys and they're catching this late afternoon sunshine helps them to, to ripen off and when the ripening process they're, they're turning starches into sugars and uh, the, the other clue is if they keep falling off then that tells you they're ripe but they're not so they're not quite these are golden delicious and they're smaller than other varieties that I've got um, some of them, even though they've been attacked, as you can see, um, they've not actually got inside the, the apple. And I've always made sure that I've sprayed these using, I use bicarb against ants, I'll use anything, tea tree from, because I'm growing tea tree, um, rubbing the trunks with onion and garlic, etc. And basically that fights the pests. And also, of course, a lot of um, trimming I do, one dwarf rootstocks, I do a lot more trimming and pruning even during the summer months on, on dwarf root stocks they don't the same rules don't apply as it those growing full grown tree however you've got to make sure that there's plenty of air and light around and to trim the top off them on these a conference pears are very hardy and are a great variety to grow an allotment on a, even on a dwarf rootstock as you can see this one's on a dwarf rootstock um, watch out for the pear rust this is some here I always remove it and you can spray with a um, mixture of sprays like bicarbonate's good with um, uh, some boric acid. Uh, you can also bicarbonate boric acid and a bit of detergent. But these are ripening off slowly. Not quite ready either. Some of my other pears are ready though. You can plant um, different varieties of pears for cross pollination and don't forget that they can be picked when a, a bit more firm than apples. So they are not, it's not so critical about the picking of, of, of plums. They will ripen off even when picked when fairly firm. The beans are sunning off nicely here in the late afternoon sunshine and those that are ready um, I will be going around to pick as soon as possible as you can see. So quite pleased with how they've got on this year. These roots have been very successful this year so basically they're Pablo variety so lots of different uh, beetroot recipes have come to mind this year so very pleased with how they've got on. It's a eucalyptus plant and it's fantastic um, if you combine it with things such as mint and lemon balm all chopped up to make an, in, um, an insect repellent and it's been very successful here. I did, I've given it a bit of fertiliser to keep it going but it's helped, it's, it's really uh, been very healthy. It's good to grow different lots of varieties of apples and that, that way uh, they can cross pollinate each other and these, these some of them will take a lot longer to ripen than you think and many villages in England have apple days as late as October the 9th or the 10th. Having noticed how successful slows are or blackthorn as they're sometimes called I've grown about half a dozen, put half a dozen onto my own plot um, this year. Sometimes this is used um, like quince as a, as a root stock for uh, for uh, dwarf root stock plants but these look like they'll be very healthy I'll, I'll basically make sure I don't let them overgrow because it can be used as a hedging plant 
this wildflower is called mullein and it was used in medieval times to make lamp wicks so basically um, they used to find a use for a lot of wildflowers and this one of course it also can make structural things as well so useful wild wildflower to grow the herb garden's done well this year and they've got chamomile and there's also uh, vervain and self heal here and of course you've got um, rosemary um, and lots of mint there of course and that's a celery leaf there and you've got a little pot there where you've got some fig growing and also parsley at the back there a few ants nests bother me but other than that not too bad at the back I've got my rosemary and you can also grow thyme here and of course you've got your lavender lemon scented these are lemon scented quite nice um, a few damson bushes as well and bay trees uh, orange blossom and I did put some olive, little olive trees in, but they've not done fantastically. At the back here, you've got your bays, and you've got um, lemon balm, rosemary, of course, and oregano, which grows well here. And there's a, there's another little uh, damson at the top. And of course, at the back there, the beautiful. These are at the best of the moment. The passion flowers. I really am impressed by these. So and now we're coming up the second week of September and they're only just sort of opening so they seem to be fairly late opening here um, but now that sunshine's come out again I imagine over the next few weeks maybe even to, into October the passion flowers will be out I've used these to cover this screen at the back of the allotment these leeks which are of Musselboro and another variety um, I've been feeding them and I've been using uh, comfrey tea but also some high concentration liquid feed because they're a hungry crop and hoping they'll be ready for um, for Christmas because that's my aim for them at the back of them you've got um, your there's some purple sprouting broccoli and that was very slow to start um, attacked by pest lot but as you can see now it's a good three to four feet high the raspberries just keep coming here in, in this uh, late summer sunshine so you get enough for a couple of punnets basically when you come down here and uh, they're ready again so later on when I finish doing the other little chores I'll come back and collect some of these just discovered this ginormous beetroot as you can see um, so some of them really do grow to a very decent size if you look at the size of this compared to my hand it really is uh, quite a monster the mini pops uh, have got the pink tassel, so they're ready to pick on quite a few of these. Already had one or two, as you've seen on the reveal from the last time I came down when it was quite late. But that's your sign there when you've got your tassels. Okay. Um, um, I started picking these. Picking them is much harder than opening them up. I do the picking bit. Um, I noticed that they do grow more because I thought you only got one or two off each one, but they do seem to come back and uh, say. So, been quite pleased with the mini pops because obviously not getting something which is as big as a sweet corn but that's not the point of growing them so grew these from seed ordered the seeds from Wilco's and planted them quite late so they've been quite successful really that I mean you've got to plant them away from sweet corn which I did do on advice from other allotment holders but they've turned out okay and the sweet corn themselves already picked quite a few of these I'm just waiting for other ones to ripen off um, as and when ready and there's one round here as you can see which is just about ready for picking and other ones as we go into the crop and I've already picked quite a few off these ones and basically just eating them as fresh as possible and that's the plan to counteract brown rot I've been rubbing um, a mixture it's onion old onions which haven't worked very well and also garlic cloves and I've even stuffed a load of garlic cloves around the bark because the bark on these tends to break up I found out that, that gauge plums have this problem they come from a village not far from Lyon in France and they variety you really do need to open them up so that you've got an open canopy and I've pruned these quite heavily very recently in the summer and I will do so again and you can see in the bottom of that tree there there are some I'll bring you over to it I've stuffed garlic cloves um, into the bark where it's broken up and it's re helped to repel ants and rubbed loads of onion just, just rub onion all around the bark 
um, raw and raw garlic cloves and rub the garlic as well and that's to fight against the uh, blossom blight which I've had on these so I'm looking forward to the fact that I might get some gauge next year. It looks like my second lot of bolotis planted um, from seed originally at home and basically they're now flowering and they look like they're going to make it and, and I've got one down there that's just started to uh, have some beans another one next to it there you see so the rest of them in flower I'm hoping um, provided we don't get some early frost should should produce a crop because these others have been, others have been very successful and enjoyed them we're really looking forward to these bramleys and the red discoveries which are there uh, which pollinate them but the red discoveries were in trouble this year until I resolved to treat the pests on them they came into blossom a lot later but then they fruited quite quite heavily so good year for them and other apple trees all dwarf rootstock have been um, extremely successful this year more beetroot pablo as you can see and they're very happy here especially now we've limed and gypsum of all the things i've added i think rather than chicken manure lime and gypsum has made a big difference down here where it's very rich clay soils and as you can see the view there of the mini pops and the tassels all waiting to be picked what does happen is when you do pick them what i should have said is more uh, grow on each plant so these mini pops are ready for picking here as you can see from the tassel colors and looking forward to doing that soon as you can see there's another one down there these uh, stringy beans were planted late they're an f1 variety and even though they were planted a lot later than normal uh, my the idea behind it was to um, make sure that they just had um, a nice well fertilized site and basically uh, trying to keep the weeds out and it looks like this wigwam structure which I repaired is going to give a nice little crop as you can see these so these bolotis are the ones that were planted first and from seed and as I said I had some for tea and uh, they turn green of course when you cook them so they turn back to normal color but they're quite exciting yes you don't get as heavy a crop as you do with other dwarf um, beans but they are quite flavoursome quite tasty so well worth the effort and I've uh, got the idea from growing it from watching other people's um, success last year so thanks for the advice to grow them so very happy this year so the great potato reveal for the 8th of September 2017 here we go these were grown in potato grow bags they planted late in May in fact bought on discount and I did use a liquid feed on this um, it's normal compost and oh looking too bad at all that's just from been turning it up red desire as you can see don't they don't look like they've been attacked at all these I've always had problems here with uh, eel worms and the like on my potatoes so let's get lucky dipping and see what you've got oh put them all over there what else have we got Oh, I like a good lucky dip, do you? <laughs> right then. Oh, there's more there. What else have we got from this particular pot? There you go, some more there. Stop now. Right, so here's the uh, second bag. Quite excited, really. You are. Been in since May, we're now September. So. Ooh. Now this is looking nicer, a bit better than the other one. We hope. Let's have a look and see what we've got. One baddie. We'll put that one on for burning. Decent size, these ones. You don't get loads of red desire, but what you do get is a, is a lovely quality of potato. And the first thing I notice is they taste so much better than the uh, shop bought ones I've had. You know, recently some have been extremely tasteless, but red desire, as a variety, I've enjoyed it. All right, so I'll get rid of any bad ones. There we go. Let's have a look. A few more there. Oh, there's one there. Oh, some more. So, we'll see if there's any more. Yep. He can come in there. Might be about it. 
maybe one or two more might find their way there but there's the, there's the pile of potatoes there there you go okay, this is the last one then as you can see already find one there more to follow been in since may late may these are diseries they look quite disease free so quite pleased with the crop no sign of blight on these ones but they were grown as you can see in bags contained in the uh, grow bags plenty of liquid feed given to them and watered them when it was very very dry um, but other than that some of the neighbours have got blight on their tomatoes so I thought I can't leave these in any longer so more time to get them out while they're still edible and they look healthy you go, even the small ones are tasty so you know keep them all that's my advice on these red desiris get the old there's the older plants out there there's any more there so that was the uh, great potato reveal for the 8th of September as you can see a decent amount of red desiree and also they're looking disease free they haven't been attacked by anything so that's a good idea that we've picked up from other people about like using grow bags for our potatoes but using a better variety of potato a better quality potato so well worth the effort here I can show you the difference between the sweet corn which is nearer to you where the tassels turn brown black when they're ready for picking and the mini pops there where the tassels are red and uh, you can see it's there's a, there's a difference between them the mini, mini pops are relatively easy to open up as well so not a problem it's harder to pick them so i, I actually pick them because you need to uh, hold on to them and, and you snap them quite low down and, and support them while you pick i've been growing my tomatoes well away from people at the allotment theirs have been badly hit by blight so because it's been away from the spores that are spreading um, I've managed to avoid it and also with my potatoes I've been growing them in grow bags so I've got a mixture here of bush tomatoes and on the other side it's um, cocktail tomatoes and as you can see it looks like they're going to be fine this year so this is what I've picked over the last four or five days from um, the drive on my garden and the back so basically the larger ones are called a bush tomato and the smaller ones are called a cocktail tomato but there seems to be a lot more to come and following advice from Muddy Boots who has been watching his channel I shall be removing excess leaves around the tomatoes to let them ripen because it seems to me that it won't be long before frost comes because it's the 8th of September today and it was extremely cold last night and here we have pride of place in my uh, vegetable rack and vegetable and fruit rack we have the red desiree potatoes sunshine and showers on sunday in september typical autumn sun's quite low so we have a beautiful rainbow i think it might be a double actually yes it is it's a pretty little double over the river trent there you see, you see the trent hills there uh, over the river there just come down today on Sunday in uh, September picking these as F1 stringies uh, beans uh, try and pick them as young as I can really and they just keep on coming planted quite late these from seed uh, and I just repaired an old TP structure um, I know that these fix nitrogen but I also did feed the soil quite well um, these Bellotti Dwarf beans have been far more vigorous than I thought so they've been on the menu quite a lot recently mixed in as a vegetable curry and kept also um, frozen along with other dwarf beans uh, in freezer bags but um, I did two lots of bolotis first lot here all planted from seed and then the next lot I put further down the allotment there and some of them as you can see on the left are just starting to come in to being uh, and other ones have been successful some of them have been blown over by very high winds but it, and even snapped basically I've just taped the stems together and staked them they seem to have recovered They're quite a tough plant really well as you can see the sun's shining through this plant here it's a gypsy mirabelle and um, nice fruit from that and hope you've enjoyed the update i'll keep you informed how the 
potatoes are getting on on the Red Desiree front and also the Bolotti to see if my second lot of Bolotti's defeat the first set of frosts.